Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Reading the Tory motion and the Labour amendment, I have to wonder what planet, indeed, what UK they live in. Indeed, some speeches remind me of Groundhog Day 2014, better together, when Scots were told, vote yes, and you'll be thrown out of the EU. Well, we all know what happened after that, we're out. To state the obvious, this government depends almost entirely for its spending purse on the Barnett formula and any consequences flowing from what the UK government additionally spends on its domestic responsibilities. Our tax raising powers are limited and most pay less tax in Scotland and England. We all, of course, however, have paid extra UK national insurance, which is a tax. And those in universal credit have lost out the £40 per week delivered during COVID. Most of those people are working. Reference has been made to the Scottish Fiscal Commission, rightly so, but not the fact that it has independently verified that our budget has decreased by 5.2% in real terms between 2021-22 and 2022-23. Let me make some progress then, yes. And that the Scottish Fiscal Commission has also confirmed a further 1% real terms reduction 2025-26. We are and will remain at the economic mercy of the UK government until such time as we are independent of it. Yes. Liz Smith. Uh, I'm grateful to Christine Graham uh, giving way. I'm not sure of which uh, newspapers uh, she reads, uh, but Brian Wilson in his Scotsman column last Saturday said that the SNP should check their own graph yep. and he referred us to the Scottish Government core resource and COVID-19 funding in real terms. And when she talks about this 5.2% cut, she fails to mention that we have the highest block grant that we've had in history. Yep. She fails to recognise that that will be increasing in real terms for this Parliament. She fails to recognise that the finance Secretary has £7 billion more than she was forecasting four years ago. Yeah. So can she explain all that? Christine Graham. First of all, I recognise an intervention when I see it, and that was a speech, and I take no lessons whatsoever from Brian Wilson, and the Tories are desperate to pay him in aid. Further, we have had two years of COVID, years of post-Brexit, not concluded, and certainly not oven ready, the impact of the war in Ukraine and inflation set to rise to 10% with desperate and destructive cost of living and energy prices. And I repeat, the UK currently has the highest inflation of any G7 country, almost twice the rate of France. I notice the Conservatives dance around that. But who do they attack? They attack the independent governor of the Bank of England, criticised for, and claiming the bank had, quotes, had fallen asleep at the wheel regarding inflation, to which Mr Bailey rightly said, there's a lot of uncertainty around this situation, and that is a major, major worry. And it's not just, I have to tell you, a major worry for this country, there's a major worry for the developing world as well. And so if I had to sort of, sorry for being apocalyptic for a moment, that is a major concern apocalyptic from the governor of the Bank of England. Now, the increase in food and energy prices doesn't just impact on individuals and families, but the cost of manufacturing, running our schools and hospitals, even filling the ambulance diesel tanks, bills which will land at the feet of this government. It's as plain as a pike staff that we face the same economic challenges as other nations worldwide, except we don't control the macroeconomy. All the other tax raising powers, companies tax, inheritance tax, VAT, fuel duty, and so on. Despite that, to protect the most vulnerable, we have commendable social policies. We make choices. Free school meals, P1 to P5. Free prescriptions, no tuition fees. Free travel for all under 22s, over 60s and 7 disabled, and so on. That is not the complete list. Add to that the 770 million already referenced to mitigate that word I hate, mitigate Tory policies. And to Liz Smith, waste. This is the waste of the UK government. Festival of Brexit, 120 million. Track and trace, 37 billion, criticised by the uh, Public Accounts uh, Committee at Westminster. 
HS2, 112 billion at least. Ferries that didn't exist, ordered by Chris Grayling, 81 million. <laughs> Nimrods, oh, I've more to come. Nimrods, Nim oh, you don't want to hear it. Perhaps you should listen. Nimrods, nine scrapped in 2011, 4.2 billion. Boris's London Garden Bridge, while mayor, 43 million and never built. Crossrail cost 4 billion above its 14.8 billion budget. PPE contracts to cronies. There's a great big list. Policies, I may add, and an economic tsunami which Scotland did not vote for. Six Tory MPs in Scotland with only four wanting to, to toss Boris out. Or is it three and a half? After all, with Douglas Ross, I think he could give Kama Sutra a run for his money. Of the UK government's man in Scotland, we would expect nothing less of uber loyalist Alistair Jack, who I'm sure is expecting a comfy seat in the best special retirement home, the House of Lords. So here's my message to Boris as he clings by his fraying fingernails to the door handle of number 10. Grab that section 30 for that legally binding referendum. After all, with your government's track record, a victory for the union should be a scoosh. Go for it, Boris. Otherwise, we'll know you fear yet another unhappy result. Independence, I say to Katie Clark, is not an end in itself, but the right to tax fairly to deliver a socially just society. And it's time Labour woke up to that. Yeah.